So I'm Chris, and actually my partner Jonathan is over there. We're from a little startup called Brandicted. Uh, but we're here to show you a little uh, example project we've been working on lately called Ramses. And um, I'll give the backstory for that a little bit. So we have this client, which is like a enterprise project management application thing. And our mandate is to do the back end. When we started the project last November, December, we inherited this super monolithic Django application that had, uh, it was using Django REST framework. Um, can I see hands for everyone who knows about REST APIs and, or has implemented them? What about those who have used Django REST framework before? OK, OK, cool. So you might be aware that it's a little bit big, or it's, it's kind of hardcore. There's a lot of different things that you need to uh, implement to use it. And we found that for a prototype project, that was way too big and way too monolithic, and it was a pain. So we developed Ramses. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so the thing is with, uh, with REST APIs is that most of the time, it's really, really simple. Or for what we need for the case of prototyping, it's super simple, which is... Uh, <clears throat> If you really want to do hardcore REST, it's, you would do like hypermedia as the engine of application state, and you would have like these crazy uh, browsable, programmable APIs that are magic, but nobody really does that. Um, so we have our own definition of, uh, of what REST really means, and it's the boring version, uh, which is making life easy, and it's simply that. JSON cried over HTTP. We don't want to do... XML, we don't want to do uh, really anything other than that. So we can make a lot of assumptions. We don't need half the features that Django REST framework gives you when we have such a constrained definition of what we want. And so therefore, when we were, oh. <clears throat> when, uh, so when we inherited this prototype and we were having to add endpoints with, uh, with attributes and stuff like every day, the requirements were changing. Um, and it was a huge pain to have to do everything with Django REST framework. <clears throat> and uh, because even with our boring definition of, uh, of what REST should mean, that's what needs to be done every single time for every endpoint that changes. And as really, really lazy people, that was a pain. Um, and it's kind of a lot of monkey work. It's all boilerplate having to uh, put all those pieces together every time you need uh, a change to an endpoint. Um, so being lazy, we didn't like that. And especially because most of the logic lives on the client these days, it's like, why? It's just an extra like salt in the wound, uh, knowing, knowing that all of that monotonous work is, um, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, <laughs> you don't even get a reward, really. So, um, so we didn't want to do all that. And we thought, maybe, maybe there's a better way. <clears throat> So given our definition of REST, which is just JSON CRUD over HTTP, our goal being zero boilerplate, we just want to write a spec and then generate a whole app, uh, a whole server just from that uh, <coughs> for prototyping. So I'll show an example if I can find it. So we found this thing called RAML. Has anyone heard of RAML before? Yeah, OK. Cool. So it's, uh, it's just a YAML uh, DSL for making REST APIs. Is my window fitting? OK. Yeah, let's just uh, do that. So here is a contrived example of, uh, of an API spec using, uh, using RAML. So as you see, it's just a YAML config where you say what you want your endpoints to be, you say your methods, uh, you can include schemas for validation, and it actually gets super crazy. You can do all kinds of inheritance and different kinds of traits and stuff. Um, so to give you an example, here is like a user model, and we have a schema right here, which just says all the different types. And I don't think we have support for all of them yet. And uh, so I'll show you, I should be able to run one here. So what it does, what we're doing with RAML that's special with Python is that we're parsing it uh, and we're actually generating a pyramid application from it. Um, 
So, so just like any other pyramid application, we run it. Um, we're just printing out uh, what, uh, what was generated for development. So these are the endpoints that we're getting from this. OK, and then I can do stuff like, I think it's 8080. So I can do users, because I have my users endpoint. And I can say name, and I can say password, and I can say, I think, email um, equals whatever. And so that should create a user for me. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. It's username. So there's the validation network. <laughs> OK. And then it responds with, there's my user. Obviously, we're not doing any kind of password encryption or anything right now. Um, and now if I do I see my list of, well, I have one user now. So that's a super, super basic example of, of doing a JSON CRUD over HTTP. Um, I don't have, I'm not going to show delete and everything. You get the, you get the idea. Um, we can also, we can also uh, post fixtures and stuff like that, so we can fill up a database. And uh, all the app is, so this is a pyramid application. We just have this little config file here. It's using Ramses, which is, uh, we did the generic base classes in a library that we're importing. So that's the only config for the application. And the only Python for the application is this. It's just the, uh, it's the entry point for the, for the development server. And it just uses Ramses. And even if, even if I showed you Ramses, the library, there's like two classes, one for generating views and one for generating uh, data models. So that's the simple example. So that basically fixes a lot of problems for us. Um, and I forgot to mention, actually, that uh, because our client has uh, sort of non- or semi-technical stakeholders, and there's a lot of them, and there's also like seven or eight different artifacts that contain requirements, and all in different natural language, and um, there's like there's wireframes, there's Excel documents. There, none of it is like testable uh, assumptions, and so part of our goal was to get away from implementing the configuration monkey work ourselves and getting the semi-technical middle management type people to actually write the specs for us. So the interface is that they'll write this YAML file, which is as easy as it can possibly get, um, and we'll do the heavy lifting, but mostly by automating it and generating it. Okay, but. In fact, there are some other things if it was actually had to be serious, if we needed to implement production applications. What you just saw is a kind of really, it's a toy. It's a, it's a proof of concept so far. Um, but we need to do all these other things. And it turns out that we actually did already have all of this stuff for our startup, Brandicted. And this is where our sort of um, scheme to dog food everything comes in, um, which we're really lucky that after the fact, we tested a bunch of different solutions. And finally, our own one is the best. So we actually get to use it. Um, <clears throat> so this is uh, Ramses' partner in crime, Nefertari, his favorite wife. <clears throat> and, uh, and so she actually powers the Brandicted API and uh, is doing all the, uh, all the uh, persistence and querying. It, um, Right now, we're using Elasticsearch for reads. So that's basically to avoid doing boilerplate CRUD in our views and to avoid the temptation of writing fancy queries inside views when what we really want to do is be super hardcore about our constrained version of what REST means. So that's why we're using Elasticsearch. And you should try it. Um, and then we had Mongo support before uh, for our product. And our client actually asked us to add uh, SQL Alchemy into the mix. And we were using Mongo Engine. And so we've actually added a database abstraction layer uh, to handle all of those things. So this is the, the meat and potatoes, really. So where do we want to go with this? <coughs> Obviously. Um, 
you can see that uh, if you have this, this, this production level thing that is making uh, you know, real solid uh, backends and you're also able to generate them dynamically um, at runtime and you're able to work with non-technical people, it's kind of a bonus. And you get to dog food your startup. <clears throat> so our goal is to actually bring them together and to be able to generate uh, Nefertari apps with Ramses. Uh, as opposed to just a, a simple pyramid app. So this is, these are our goals. We want to we combine them. We want to get people interested in, uh, in doing that kind of stuff because it can save a lot of time and you don't have to do monkey work. <clears throat> so yeah, that's the presentation. 